A new poll out today shows Donald Trump's favorability spiking among Republican voters. This is just the latest in a series of polls that show the same trend. Despite his controversial public comments on illegal immigration, is he becoming the face of the GOP? Here to break it down for us is CBS News senior political editor Steve Shigera. Steve, always great to see you. Great to see you, Meg. So what is going on here? Trump is making a huge jump in the polls recently. What's behind it? Well, there's a couple of things. I think, first of all, there's definitely uh, this sort of simmering frustration among uh, part of the Republican Party, conservatives especially, who, you know, they've lost the last two presidential elections. Uh, they feel that the president uh, is, is, is listless or, you know, sort of, you know, getting steamrolled on foreign policy. And they got a guy like Donald Trump who comes out there and is talking tough and and, and, and and brash and really just sort of telling it like it is, at least to them. Uh, and I, I think what you're seeing is, is Republicans sort of um, warming at least to the, uh, the character that is Donald, Donald Trump. His unfavorable numbers have, have really gone way down, which, you know, he was up at 60 plus percent in one poll a couple of months ago in unfavorables, and now he's about 40 percent. But Steve, how much do you think this is serious traction versus name recognition? It's a combination of name recognition, I think, and of uh, of the message that he's sort of sending to Republicans that you need a tough talker in order to get things done. And whether he's going to be the guy uh, at the end of the day that's going to be the one that gets the nomination uh, it remains to be seen. But I think it's it should be a signal to the other uh, dozen or so uh, Republican candidates that at least conservatives are looking for somebody who's going to talk tough, who's really going to slam Obama, who's going to talk about what they're going to get done uh, as president of the United States if they're elected. And really, basically, they want somebody who is going to be a fighter uh, against Hillary Clinton in the general election. So what are you hearing then from the GOP? How would they feel about Donald Trump becoming the face of the party? Well, there's, there's two schools of thought there. One, I, there's no question that Republicans want somebody who can take it to Hillary and who can take it to President Obama. Um, but the kinds of things that Donald Trump is saying is really uh, upset uh, some of the leaders of the Republican Party, mainly because, it's, you know, looking specifically at his immigration comments, it's not... Um, a way to build uh, the brand, at least broaden the tent, to bring in um, more Hispanics. Uh, that's really one of the goals that they've been trying to do. Mitt Romney received 27 percent of the Hispanic vote in 2012, and one of the goals of the Republican Party is to try to bring uh, more Latino and Hispanic voters into the tent. You're not going to do that by insulting Mexican immigrants. And so uh, I think there's a, a definite worry that the kinds of things that Donald Trump is saying could turn off some voters that they really want to get in the general election. Steve, what do you make of Donald Trump becoming basically the poster child for immigration? When we saw him announce his candidacy, he went off script. He made those negative comments about illegal immigrants, Mexican immigrants being rapists coming to America. This all kind of unfolded in, in an odd way, don't you think? Yeah, it wasn't, I don't think it was his intention to be solely talking about immigration, and you're starting to see him try to pivot. Uh, the Iran deal is, is an issue that he uh, is now trying to make uh, a big issue, basically saying that the president has been steamrolled uh, on Iran and trying to uh, criticize the president's foreign policy. But if you listen to that speech, I mean, it was really an aside at the beginning of his speech, the immigration comment. I mean, he talked about a lot of things, China and Obamacare and all these, uh, and, and, and a lot of other issues. Um, so it was pretty clear that that's not what he wanted to focus focus on, but uh, the, uh, the choice of words that he used really sort of picked up a lot of, uh, a lot of opposition, and that's why we're still talking about it weeks later. All right, let's talk about the Democrats a little bit. Another poll out shows that Hillary Clinton is trailing in the polls a little bit. How is she being affected by that? Well, she's she's losing a little bit of support. Uh, what's interesting is her her favorability numbers, uh, even among Democrats, are going down. Uh, part of that is uh, she is out there campaigning and she's out there being a politician. And I think what we've seen is when she's not being a politician, when she was Secretary of State, her numbers went way up. But now that she's mixing it up on the campaign trail, uh, it's affecting her numbers. What uh, there, there are a couple of uh, I wouldn't say alarming, but interesting numbers. Uh, her trust, uh, the tr the trust number for her has gone way down in terms of the number of, of uh, Americans who trust uh, Hillary Clinton. And, and, and that plays into uh, the narrative about Hillary Clinton not being forthcoming on several issues, whether it's the Clinton Foundation uh, or her emails. Um, and so the question is, as a general election candidate, if she does become the nominee, will this trust issue be something that will prevent people from voting for her? 
And we've heard that Vice President Joe Biden will announce if he's running for president by Labor Day. Uh, Monmouth poll out shows that if he does enter the race, he could shake up the race for Hillary Clinton. How much support could he take away from her? Well, it's interesting. There was a number in that Monmouth poll that showed that 43 percent of Democrats uh, were at least somewhat likely to support him if he jumps in. I think we have to be careful with this. Biden really hasn't done anything to indicate that he's going to run. He is, there's been discussion uh, among people around him that he's considering it. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we're going to hear whether he's going to do this or not by Labor Day. But he really hasn't done anything in terms of uh, getting an organization together to make this happen. If he jumps in, he's really going to be starting from scratch, uh, which would be interesting to see if he does decide to do this, because there is an alternative right now to Hillary Clinton, and that's Bernie Sanders, who's come really out of nowhere. Uh, to be uh, to give her some trouble in Iowa and New Hampshire. And so he'd have to go up against really two candidates at this point. All right. A lot to watch. CBS News senior political editor Steve Shigaris. Always good to see you. Thanks so much. You too, Meg.